Hey, it's Luke here once again for the M5 Stack official channel. On this channel, we've covered various different ways to program your M5 Stack devices, from various block based programming interfaces to Arduino to MicroPython. Aside from these, there's a way to develop on our M5 Stack devices with a deeper level of control, and that is ESP IDF. The IoT development framework developed by Espressive, the maker of the ESP32 chip. When programming M5 stack devices in either Arduino or ESP IDF, you'll be using the C programming language. So if they use the same language, what's the difference? ESP IDF is the official API from Espressive. Arduino support for ESP32 devices is simply a wrapper around that API. Just to name a few of the benefits of using ESP IDF, we can get flash encryption, secured boot, and since it's the native SDK of the ESP32 chip, you'll get all the bug fixes and updates before they're implemented in Arduino libraries. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started in setting it up. The ideal operating system to use is Linux, and I'll be using Ubuntu for this video. Most other distros have a pretty similar install method. If there's any interest to do a Mac or Windows version of this tutorial, I can do one of those in the future. However, it's easy enough to use a virtual machine, such as VirtualBox, to run Linux on those systems. And there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do that. So let's start from a fresh install of Linux and see what we need to get. Firstly, I'll install a serial terminal emulator called Screen. I'll do that with sudo apt get install screen. This is helpful so we can monitor the serial output of the M5 device. We have quite a lot of commands to type on the console, but I've made a list which you can access from the description so you can just copy and paste the commands. Next up is all the dependencies that the ESP IDF environment requires. Things such as the GCC compiler and various Python libraries which are required to flash to the device. Next we'll need to create an ESP directory, which we'll CD into, and then we need to clone the ESP IDF repository from GitHub. We do so by typing git clone and then including the link to the repository. Next we'll need to CD into the ESP IDF folder that we just cloned and we need to make a few small changes here. The latest version of ESP IDF is version 4, however we'll need version 3 as that was the last version that the M5 stack and M5 stick C ESP IDF templates were designed for. And then we'll update the submodules for this particular branch of the ESP IDF. Now that we have the ESP IDF framework, we also need to install the extensor toolchain. Let's go back into the ESP directory and then use this command to get the toolchain. Then we'll extract it into the folder. In order for the ESP IDF framework to be able to find the location of the extensor toolchain, we'll need to add its location to our paths. We can do so with this command. We also need to add the ESP IDF location to our paths as well. Now that's all we need to set up the ESP IDF framework. Now for the specifics for M5 stack devices, we'll go to the M5 stack GitHub and clone the M5 stick C IDF templates. While we're at it, we can also git clone the M5 stack core IDF template. To test everything's working fine with our ESP IDF framework, we can go into the Getting Started folder and choose the Hello World program. Then we type make to compile the source code. This will bring us into a text-based menu where we can change all sorts of attributes related to the flashing of the ESP32 device. Now it tries to compile the source into a bin file, but you'll notice that we have an issue here. This is quite common when installing the ESP IDF as there are many different versions and there's different quirks depending on your operating system. All I needed to do though to fix this was just to use pip to install the cryptography library again. 
If you come across any issues, I suggest you use Google and copy the error messages there, and you'll usually find your answer pretty quick. Now if we run the make command again, we'll be successful in creating a bin file. This can now be flashed to our ESP32 device using the ESP tool script, or by typing make flash. This program really isn't going to do much in our M5 stick though, so let's go into the stickc IDF folder and try the stock example there. This time we'll type make menu config. This will again take us to that blue text menu. We can just skip the settings and go to exit. Now we type make flash to flash directly to the device. Make sure your M5 stick C is plugged in. Now everything compiled correctly, but we had an error, could not open the port. Even though my M5 stack device is plugged in, in Linux there's a few things we need to do to allow the user to access the COM port. We'll type sudo usermod slash a slash capital G dialout and then the username to add the current user to the dialout group. Then we'll type sudo chmod a plus rw and then the name of the port to allow read and write capabilities on that port. Now if we run make flash again this time we should be successful and by the end of the process we'll see hard resetting via RTS pin and our M5 stick C has been successfully flashed. That's all I've got time for this week. ESP IDF is something quite new to me so I'm going to be doing a lot more research here and hopefully making some more videos about programming your device with the ESP IDF. If this video was helpful make sure to leave a comment don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.